It's 7.10 p.m. Hey, what's up, Facebook? So I'm getting ready to do the shout out. Um, I'm going to open my window up and uh, shout out the window. Here we go. Hello! West Alameda! It's after 7 o'clock! It's time to give a shout out! And thank you! To all the front line and the essential workers! To the doctors! The nurses! First responders! The longshoremen! The bus drivers, the truck drivers, the farm workers, those who work in the restaurants, the stores, the hotels, the warehouse, the counselors, the teachers, the parents. So please, if you can hear my voice, would you give a shout out? Would you clap your hands? Honk your horns? Make some noise! All right, frontline workers, yeah, I see you over there. All right, all right. Hey, Facebook. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, hey, Brenda, what's up? Thank you for coming out here. Good to see you. So um, this is... Today is day 334. Let me turn this thing around so you can see. Mm. So day 334. This is the last day of February 2021. It's February 28th. As of 6.30 p.m., according to the YouTube channel, those who have died from coronavirus throughout the world has been 2,545,044 people. Here in the United States is uh, 525,776. So as always, I do ask all of you to keep in your prayers and keep in your thoughts um, all those who have died from COVID-19 and uh, all over the world, and also ask you to keep in your prayers and in your thoughts people who um, have tested positive for COVID-19 and uh, are in quarantine or, um, you know, in the hospital, people who actually had to go to the hospital for other things besides COVID, uh, physical, emotional, mental uh, problems, mental breakdowns, you know, what, whatever the case may be, I'm asking you to, you know, keep them in your prayers and keep them in your thoughts. You know, a lot of people are going through a lot of things when we are stuck up in the house. So, um, speaking about being stuck up in the house, I wasn't stuck in the house today. Today was a beautiful day here in California. I actually went to San Jose to the flea market. That's the big flea market down in San Jose. It was actually really nice. It was a very nice day, and I wore a mask. I actually had a matching mask to my Filipino flag head wrap, Filipino flag uh, mask. So it was a great day. I enjoyed myself. It was a, it was it was good. So today, what I want to do, see if I can find my um, remote. Let's see. Uh, Today, what I want to do is talk about Rikia. Hold on, let me turn this around, y'all, so you can see it. Rikia Young. Rikia Young. Rikia Young was 28 years old, um, a health aid worker. She was beaten by the Philadelphia police October 30th, 2020. And... Um, I'm going to play you this clip that's on YouTube. I want you to see what happened to her. Hold on. 
To this now a total fabrication. Attorneys for a young Philly mom allegedly beaten by police in the hours after Walter Wallace's death say they will expose the truth. They are <laughs> the National Fraternal Order of Police as well for what they describe as propaganda on social media. In this picture, we see a young boy in the arms of a Philadelphia police officer. It was taken in the overnight hours Wednesday morning. And we are now learning more about the moments that led up to that picture. NBC 10's Sydney Long has the latest. With the heartwarming photo of a black toddler wrapped in the arms of a white female Philly cop, a Facebook post by the National Fraternal Order of Police that captured eyes across the nation. Before being taken down at Redden Park, this child was lost during the violent riots in Philadelphia, wandering barefoot. We're not going to let them get away with this. We're going to bring you the two. We're going to expose this lie for what it is. First posted Wednesday in the hours after Walter Wallace Jr. was killed by police, the caption went on to say, We are not your enemy. We are the thin blue line, and we are the only thing standing between order and anarchy. Today, attorneys for 28-year-old Rikia Young, who is the boy's mother seen here with a bloody lip, say nothing could be further from the truth. Officer just swarmed her car. And it put her in fear. She started to try and lock her door because she didn't know what was happening. Young, they say, was at the center of this now viral cell phone video they played for us today. It was tough to even count how many police officers were there. Narrating that she had just picked up her teenage nephew from a friend's and on her normal route home encountered protesters and a line of police who ordered her out of the area. She was attacked brutalized and embarrassed in a number of ways. It's dark, but Young's attorney says police threw her to the ground, beating her and her nephew, the little boy in the back seat. From a police van, Young used another woman's cell phone to dial her mom, who later found the grandson in the back of a police cruiser at 15th and JFK with glass in his car seat. We do not expect to be flim flammed or bamboozled about what did in fact occur on that day because we have seen the video and we know ourselves that our eyes don't lie. Philly Police Commissioner Daniel Alwal says as soon as she saw the video, she launched an internal affairs investigation. We've identified the officer uh, responsible for the one that we see um, using the strikes against the car, and uh, that officer has since been placed on restricted duty pending the outcome of the investigation. Also, just this afternoon, the National Fraternal Order of Police responded to NBC10, admitting that after posting the photo, it learned of, quote, conflicting accounts of the circumstances under which the child came to be assisted by the officer and immediately took the photo and caption down. Now, we want to let you know that a woman who was in the area actually shot that video and later posted it to Instagram. As for the investigation, Commissioner Outlaw says there's no definitive timeline as to exactly how soon it would be complete. But with this case, like other allegations, <laughs> extremely seriously. Reporting live from Philly Police Headquarters, I'm Sydney Long, NBC10 News. Hoo wee So... Y'all hear that? There's a couple things we should um, talk about right there. Um, let me turn this thing off. Um, first of all, Rakia Young was not involved in the riot that was taking place. There was a demonstration over Walter Wallace who had been killed by the police, okay? So there were protesters out. Rakia Young had her 15-year-old nephew and her two-year-old son in the back of the car, SUV, in a car seat. She came driving down the street, all of a sudden realized she was right in the middle of a riot. The police was beating protesters. The protesters was throwing bottles and rocks at the police, and then they was running away from the police. Rakia Young came down a one-way street, which was the way she was supposed to be going. And she realized <clears throat> that, hey, I'm in a riot. She tried to turn around. But when trying to turn around, you've got the police on one side, and you got the protesters running the other way. you got to try to make sure you don't run nobody, hit nobody. And in the process of doing that... The police decide that she is trying to get there. It's 7.20 p.m. That's the 
that's my t tell me how much time I got on here. Um, so when you see the clip, they swarm the car. And the cops are giving her conflicting orders. Get out the car. Stop the car. Stop the effort. You know, the whole bit. So she doesn't know what to do. She finally stops the car. They're beating on her car. They break the windows. They snatch her nephew out the car. They snatch her out the car. And you can see from the film that they was beating her. They beat her. And this wasn't like three cops. We're talking, if you saw that clip, there was like a whole bunch of cops. You know what I'm saying? There was a whole bunch of police up in there the swarming on her. No democracy now, Doc. It's earlier that day. I want you to see it again. This is... She was just trying to get her nephew and son home when she took a turn... Hey, Miss Lori. ...street unknowingly driving straight into a throng of police and riot gear. As Rakia tried to turn the car around and leave the dangerous scene, the officers descended on her SUV, broke all its windows, and assaulted and arrested her. Mm. This is Rakia Young in her own words describing the attack to the Philadelphia Inquirer in a recently published video interview. Once I got close enough to see the cops, I stopped. Like, I stopped right there. I was trying to turn around, but it was like people came inside the street. It was up there throwing stuff at the cops. Next thing you know, the cops started charging and started running. My nephew was saying, lock the doors, lock the doors, because it was a big on the car. Look at the cops running at this car. Rakia Young was then separated from her two-year-old child and held for hours. Two-year-old child held for hours. They took they took her in the paddy wagon. Fortunately, another prisoner in the paddy wagon had her cell phone and gave her the cell phone so she could call her mother to try to find out where her son was at. You guys know about this thing called FOP, Fraternal Order of Police. It's like a, a the police union. All the cops belong to it. Did you see that picture where that white cop had that little boy in her arms? They posted, the police posted on the Fraternal Order of Police website. During the riots, this little... Black child was wandering the streets barefoot, and we saved this child. We saved the child, and we don't care about the color. We are the only thing that stands uh, between order and chaos and anarchy. We are the good guys. They failed to talk about the truth that the whole thing was because the police was the one that broke the windows and did this, and they don't want to snatch the child. But there's more to that story. They left the woman's car. They left Rakia's car in the middle of the street. They took the child. They took Rakia. They took her nephew to jail. Left the car with the keys. And somebody came and stole the car. Police said they didn't know where the car was. Fortunately, Rakia was able to call her mama. Her mama came down to try to find her grandson, found her grandson like 20 blocks away in a police car. And, you know, that's the whole thing. 
So there's two things we need to talk about. You know, I'm talking about policing in police impunity, which is because of qualified immunity. We talked about what qualified immunity is. Qualified immunity, or another word would be impunity. And according to Wikipedia, impunity is the exemption from punishment or the loss or escape from fines. Cops don't get charged. There are no consequences. And if you don't have no consequences, you get to do whatever you want to do. And that's what they did. So, Riakia Young, 28 years old, health aid worker, beaten by the police. You saw that video where... <sighs> Like screaming, like trying to find my son. The officer had a nerve to tell me he's in a better place. DHS. You can say anything you want about me, but calling me, like saying something like that to me is an insult. They, as a whole, the Philadelphia Police Department, treated me as if I was an animal on the street. An animal don't even deserve it. After police assaulted Rakia Young, separated her from her child a photo was taken of a female officer holding her toddler now look at the this National fraternal order of police the nation's largest police union posted the photo on social media falsely claiming quote this child was lost during the violent riots in philadelphia wandering around barefoot in an area that was experiencing complete lawlessness we are the only thing standing between order and anarchy, unquote. The false post racked up thousands of shares before it was delivered <laughs> outcry. More than a month after the police attack, Rakia Young is still fighting for justice and demanding the officers involved be fired. She's also trying to help her two-year-old recover from the physical and emotional trauma of the assault. This is Rakia speaking to the Philadelphia Inquirer. He's petrified, and he's only two years old. My my mom and my nephew asked him what happened. He was saying, car, door, open door, and up there banging his hand. Like as if, like you know, the cops is banging on the car. He just kept repeating it. Like he's still trying to tell the story. Okay, y'all. Uh... That's messed up. Okay. The whole protest was over a mental, mentally disabled person named Walter who had been killed by the Philadelphia police. And the protesters were protesting the fact that, you know, this mentally ill person had been killed. And that's what they were doing. They were protesting. The cops always say that... Um, they fear for their life, and that's why they shoot and kill somebody. They wasn't scared when they wasn't scared when them uh, them right wingers, them Confederates, and them Trump supporters, and the Proud Boys, and the QAnons. They weren't scared when they attacked. And to me, it seemed like if you were really scared, that's the time you should have been scared. That's the time you should have took out your gun. And you should have shot somebody. I'm not saying people need to be shot. But at the same time, why are you shooting us and we're not even a real danger to you? So my whole point about this whole situation is qualified immunity needs to be eliminated. Abolish qualified immunity. A-Q-I. Eliminate qualified immunity. E-Q-I. And remember, Qualified immunity is simply another word for police impunity because there's there's no consequences. They're going to do whatever it is they want to do and they're going to get away with it. So I'm going to leave this with you guys and I hope that you, um, you know, leave my time with it's 7.30 p.m.
my time my time is up i try to keep it keep it um keep it down so hey rakia young i don't know what happened how the lawsuit went this happened back in october 2020 um mabuhai Ashe, Harambe, Amandla, Hokahe, Keviva, Wakanda forever, Namaste, Shalom, Assalamu alaikum, Wa alaikum assalam. Hey y'all, um, stay safe, stay strong. You know, wear that mask. I wore my mask all day. Every, I wore my mask. That's what I do. And I'm asking all of you to wear a mask. And uh, let's work to get rid of qualified immunity. If there's no consequences for the police, they will have police impunity and just do whatever the hell they want to do, which is what they've been doing. All right, y'all. One love. I'm up out of here.